y'all. Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I want to talk to you a little bit right quick about honeysuckle. Y'all, this vine is taking over America, uh, it and kudzu and a few other vines that have some really good medicinal properties. Uh, a lot of times we look at these invasive species and we think, oh, what a pest. It's like kudzu. They're taking over everything. It's such a nuisance. But you have to look at why they were brought here or what their benefit is for being here. Uh, and honeysuckle is largely overrated. Now, as kids, we always pick these little blooms off, bit the bottom and the thing in, and you can suck the little bit of flavor out of that. But that whole thing is, is medicinal. So what I want to read to you a little bit out of this, and I'm using, again, the Southeast Medicinal Plant Book. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite books for quick reference, easy to use, good color photos, identification. It is not the most in-depth knowledge in medicine making book. Uh, the Indian Herbology of North America is one of my favorite books. Uh, you've seen that little clip of a stack of books. Some of those are my favorites. And then the, the North American uh, or the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies is another really good one. But I want to read just the medicinal uses of this Japanese honeysuckle. Okay, it says, Our knowledge of this plant comes from traditional Chinese medicine where both the flowers and the vines are used to clear heat, which in this case means it helps fight infections. Modern research has shown that being effective antiviral and antibacterial, as well as being somewhat anti-inflammatory. Flower buds are considered the strongest medicine and are in some ways the echinacea of Chinese medicine. They are a primary herb used in formulas to treat the onset of head colds, influenza, especially when and where there is a fever. It can also be used for sinus infections, ear infections, and sore throats. They are antimicrobial, but also help reduce the inflammation caused by these bugs. The vines do the same thing, just not as strong. What that means is the flower on this is the main most medicinal property, but the whole plant is medicinal. It's just not as quite as strong as these blooms are. So you would want to harvest the blooms and make your medicine out of those blooms. Japanese honeysuckle can treat diarrhea and dysentery by killing the microbes that are causing the digestive upset. Interestingly, it is also considered a mild laxative. Maybe it helps flush out the bad stuff. It is not an antiparasite. It doesn't kill worms and other multi-cell critters, but it does seem to be effective against single-cell organisms, such as the kind one gets from drinking bad water. Okay, so that would be um, pathogens in water that you get to cause um, giardia. The plant can also be used topically for sores, abscesses, ulcerations, warts, and other acute skin conditions. So that being said, I am currently making some plantain and um, self-heal salve. I am thinking about drying some of this material and put in with that and make me a salve that's kind of a do-all salve, and no matter if you get a bug bite or whatever, uh, I, I would put jewel weed in it, but I don't personally have jewel weed on my property and that grows in my area. I have just not found it where I get to look. So it says future harvest. I wanted to read this. No worries about over harvesting this abundant and invasive weed. Uh, a lot of people frown when you call a medicinal plant a weed, but that's, you know, so you'll find this, and, and I wanted to see, see, I mower right along this edge right here. You see where I cut grass right up through here, and then along this edge, it is growing right here behind me up the side of some of my other plants. There's some privet coming up right here, uh, pokeweed back here, beautyberry coming up, goldenrod, and this is just climbing all over it. So obviously these flowers are the most medicinal part. Harvest them, make your medicine, your tincture out of that. I would use an alcohol probably. Um, now this book does not go into detail into dosage and things like that. So we may can go find another book 
on how to make the medicine. Okay, let me read you where and when to wildcraft, just so you know. This is a common weed vining he up hedges and fences throughout eastern North America, from Ontario to Maine, south to Florida, and west to Kansas and middle Texas, all the eastern United States, basically. Harvest the flowers when they are club-shaped buds, just about to open. That would be like, uh, I've seen some right here. When it looks like this, that is what you want to harvest. Though it flowers through the summer, the easiest time to harvest is in the early spring when there is a lush abundance of these juicy flowers. It takes a long time to gather a pint's worth because they are so light. So bring some friends to help or plant a day around it. The other option is to use the green stem, the vine itself, harvested in summer after most of the flowers have finished. Though easier to harvest, it is considered less effective, but is still official in the Chinese Materia America. So basically take that right there and put that whole thing in your tincture. Y'all, I just wanna help you learn some of these medicinal plants. I'm gonna cover some more in some of these little short videos and put them out so that you can be learning what to use and what these do. This is one that gets overlooked a lot. You don't hear a lot of people talking about this particular plant. So anyway, thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one. Uh, we coming up. We making some more uh, plantain sad video coming. I'm working on that today. I'm also working on another wild lettuce medicine making video. So that'll be coming pretty quick. So hang with me. We got a lot of medicine making for the next month or so. We'll see y'all have a good one.